you get mentioned in my name. We don't like what you say. I don't give a fuck. Y'all can suck my dick. All right, welcome to module four, and we're moving right along. I told you this was no fluff, right? Uh, don't worry if you're a little bit confused. Don't get lost. Um, you know, don't lose the forest for the trees. If uh, you know, I'm going from slide to slide, telling you click here, click here, click here. When you go back through and you do all this stuff, it all makes sense, right? Uh, and, and after you do it once, you're an old pro. Uh, but I would be remiss if I didn't tell you exactly how to do every step of the way. So for you advanced guys that, be, or that are like, oh, I know how to make a list in active campaign, come on. Um, you know, don't get mad at me either because there's people that are watching this that probably don't know how to make a list in active campaign. And for you beginner guys that are like, well, you're moving too fast and stuff like that. Remember it's a video, just watch it twice, right? <laughs> So, module four, setting up the contest part three. What we're doing is we're heading back to lead pages and we're going to edit that page that we made before. So, we go over here to the edit uh, button. Uh, you can see that we named it uh, Trattoria La Strada uh, Dinner, right? And here we go. So, this is our uh, basically our opt-in page not basically this is our opt-in page and what we're gonna do is click that button um, we're not entering to win but what we're gonna do is edit that but that's the way that we uh, access the options so what I do is when this pops up it's got like an image here it's like download your report now or stuff something like that um, I edit that verbiage hide that picture um, I alter the button text and, and even for the this this example I've taken out the phone number because um, most of the time I mean like you know most of the time you're not going to need their phone number unless you're doing SMS uh, texting which we plan on um, testing that and seeing how well that works and sending them more uh, more offers especially for like uh, the local people but for the nationwide it, when I say the local people though if we were doing it locally you know so if we got a bunch of people in for um, an Italian restaurant or something like that then maybe if a cigar shop owner was another one of our clients um, maybe uh, the people that were interested in Italian were be interested in cigars or maybe a better one would be like if another high-end restaurant came out maybe a high-end Mexican restaurant or maybe a high-end Greek restaurant or something like that right um, we could still remarket to those lists using SMS and that's one thing we really want to try but we just haven't really gotten around doing with this method yet uh, so I can't say oh you should try this and stuff and we haven't really tried it at all yet all right so for this example we're not grabbing their phone number but just know that that is definitely something that we're looking into so um and then i'll change that over to enter to win i usually leave that privacy policy alone because it looks pretty good there uh, you and now i want you to take special note email here first name last name okay also remember you can you can steal this from me almost there just enter your name and email so we can contact you if you win you'll also learn about great discounts and promotions from Trattoria La Strada this is setting them up to hey it's not gonna be surprised if you get an actual email from us alright so they know when they opt in hey we're gonna be sending you emails all right, so once you have it like you like it, just be sure to click OK at the bottom of the left screen. Um, I do find it necessary uh, to tell you about that because lead pages sometimes it's really easy to go from one screen to another without saving sometimes, um, and you will lose your work. It's done it. Lead pages has eaten my work before, so I don't want that happening to you. So make sure when you do anything, click OK, click Save as much as possible, right? So next we're going to go up and click integration settings and what we're going to do is you have two pull downs here. Um, we've already integrated active campaign so we're going to you know, pull that from the, the, the pull down and then you can find your list 
in there as well. And of course, our list is Trattoria La Strada Dinner Giveaway, right? We're not using lead notifications. We're not integrating with GoToWebinar. We're not using Facebook registration for this, okay? And then click OK for that. Now, after you'll notice, remember I said take special note that it said email, first name, last name, right? After I integrated with the list, the list itself, their settings is full name, not first name, last name. So what Lead Pages has done is it says, okay, well, I'm going to uh, modify myself to fit what your list wants. Okay, so after that, you'll notice the first name, last name fields will disappear from your form if full name doesn't automatically take its place because sometimes what will happen is just email will be there and then full name won't populate so if that happens what you can do is come over here and you'll see form fields and then you'll see full name right there and then just click that and then click OK and it'll populate real quick so then I want you to go over and click the thank you page and Ignore all that bull crap right there, but just untick that box. That's your default thank you page. And then put your thank you page in there. Now, um, this is basically a redundancy because we already said on the um, on the actual list, right? In Active Campaign, we already said, hey, we want them, once they're opted in, we want them to go over to um, this thank you page right however with lead pages is uh, it's one of those things I don't know if it's a quirk or what but sometimes it just doesn't work out like that so I'll put the same uh, thank you page in here as well in lead pages as I have in the actual in, in my autoresponder which is active campaign and then just click OK and then click the X to go back to the original screen and you can see here and remember learn to do this a lot in lead pages it will eat your work at the worst time if you don't um, it's done it to me plenty of times just because I'll get kind of sloppy and fast and I'm just wanting to do this real quick so click Save right here and then click publish uh, once you do click publish it will show you this screen this will pop up and what you can do is you can click view page to view the page that you know you've created because you're done now right that was all it took to create that that squeeze page on lead pages right um, I see a lot of people buying traffic uh, on Facebook and in AdWords and um, I can't believe they're doing it on AdWords but I've seen it I swear um, and a lot of other places and they're just sending people to their ugly lead pages um, their ugly lead pages URL don't do that take advantage like take the extra two and a half minutes to uh, use the WordPress plugin which is what I'm talking about on these next slides I think it's so important um, for branding purposes um, for uh, URL scoring which is something that you know you definitely uh, want to take into consideration you have no idea who else is uh, using lead pages not everybody is on the up and up uh, but they're still using lead pages and it's driving the quality of that URL down so you want the the quality of the URL to be you know on you basically you want it to be your quality and not having to be lumped in with everybody else that's using that lead pages URL sending traffic to it so Go ahead and publish the page by clicking WordPress and then download the lead pages WordPress plugin and then upload it to your site, right? Really easy to do. And then once it's uploaded and you've activated the plugin, just go to lead pages on the sidebar, add new, and then uh, I said lap dog here. <laughs> Oops. Um, here. Not that it really matters. Uh, make the lead page type uh, is normal page. Make the lead page type normal page. There we go. All right. I don't think there's too many spelling errors or grammatical errors in here. 
but the most the fun, ones that are the most fun are the ones you catch when you're actually doing your video. So made the lead page type normal page, select the correct lead page to display, set your custom URL and click publish, okay? So what you would do is this is a drop down menu, you would just um, select the page that you just created and then you can put any URL here this is your domain.com so example.com and then you can put any URL there and then just click publish and that's it and people are too lazy to do that I don't get it okay and you can see that I'm viewing my page it looks good but we're still not done yet okay but we've only I mean this is taking maybe 10 15 20 minutes uh, for us to get this far if that that's what we're going slow so you can see example.com forward slash tutorial uh, La Strada contest, right? And you can make sure that it looks all good and everything. Now, how I would split test this, and by split test I mean like the pages and the ads and stuff like that. The main thing I would split test is the image of the restaurant we used in the example, meaning that restaurant right here, versus an image of a dining, a couple dining, right? Um, a lot of I, you know I don't want to say most of the time because I have no idea what other people's is but in my uh, experience and I'm, I'm talking about over a, almost 11 years of running paid traffic uh, from everything to AdWords to um, you know banner ads to uh, of course Facebook um, human faces are drawn or draw people in a whole lot more than even the most beautiful image because that's a pretty image you know but most of the time human faces will draw in someone uh, a whole lot faster right and especially female faces and it's not like a sex thing but like it's just in I guess we're biologically programmed to look at eyes so while these two couples right here you, they're neither of them are looking at us um, always split test some kind of an ad and, and you're gonna see in our ad sets that we actually have one where there's a lady looking into the camera and more often than not those will work so much better uh, than something like this or something like this but you're gonna be remiss if you don't have the actual if you don't at least try with an image of the business or an image of a couple uh, having dinner together right with for an Italian restaurant um, and also split this against images of the food okay and you're gonna you're gonna see this as we get into the ad stuff so but whatever you do make sure that that image exactly matches the image on the landing page uh, this is not optional okay you will kill your opt-in rate otherwise just like we talked about earlier it's kind of like it's like a whoa you know what is that it's a pattern interrupt and not a good one right you want congruency all the way through from the ad to the landing page okay also one thing that uh, you don't have to do it first with your first ad sets, but if you're going to run this promotion for this business for a while, you definitely don't want teenagers sitting at a restaurant table and targeting people in their 60s uh, on Facebook to come in, uh, you know, for, for an ad. So if it's basically like saying, oh, this, this restaurant's full of, you know, young whippersnappers, right? Um, you know, if I was in my 60s, I don't want to be with a bunch of, uh, you know, young 20 year olds or maybe, you know, might be a loud environment. I don't know. There's you never know what kind of assumptions people are making. Alternatively, if you are, you know, running some traffic and you're targeting 20 to 30 year olds, don't have a 70 year old sitting there enjoying his pasta right <laughs> on, on your head so this is I mean this happens so so much I mean look in your own Facebook feed and you can see ads that are uh, they might be targeting you but if they just did a put a little more thought into the ad image itself it would be so much more targeted uh, for you and it's so easy to do too. I mean, it's just uploading another another image. So so your question um, and, and Trust me 
I know that, that there's some people that are asking this question right now. Uh, hey, this is, this is, where's the software that you're using to run these, these contests and these giveaways and stuff? Well, we're, we don't have software, right? I mean, as you'll see, we're just using a random generator just to, to select the winners and stuff. But Robert, why don't you use Software X? I heard of this great Facebook giveaway software or something like that. Uh, why, don't, why don't you use this software or that software? I heard it's really good. Uh, what, did you, did you just not know about it? You know, what, what do you know that I don't? Well, reason number one, when I start a process like this, and remember, we've been, we've been testing this since the beginning of 2015, and it is right now it's not even March yet, okay? So this is a relatively new method. It's not a relatively new method process I mean people have been running um, giveaways for a long long time uh, even before Facebook even before the internet even before you know a lot of stuff right um, so it's not you know that the, the basic core technique is not anything new however when I start a process I want as much control over each variable as process so I skin it down to the bones and then maybe I'll add this and maybe I'll add that and maybe I'll add that. And we may look into software solutions in the future, okay? And you should keep your eyes peeled too if that's what you're into. Uh, more automated solution. But right now, this process, I mean, you can see it's not taking that long to put together. Uh, it works and it works very, very well. So if it's not broke, I'm not fixing it just to fix it, right? Now, reason number two, even though I keep my ear very close to the ground, it's impossible for me and my team to keep up with every new piece of software out there all the time. We're too busy, you know, I'm too busy running businesses, okay, uh, and, and pushing forward all the time to keep up with the latest launches of, of just stuff, of just more stuff that's filling our, our inboxes every day, right? But if you decide to test software and you think it helps, Right, because I did tell you, hey, after a few times doing, just do it the my way a few times, and if you find another way you want to deviate to, by all means, it's your business. Try. If you decide to test software that you think that it does help this, and you feel free to drop me a note and tell me about it. I'd love to hear about it. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to test it. You know, I might look into it or something like that. But by all means, take this method and run with it. Um, but you know, for the fifth time today, use my way first, and then you can kind of go off in your own deviations. Re reason number three that I'm not using software for this um, is I'm not an early adopter. I don't risk my business on beta or newly released software. What I do is always let others hammer that software in the real world. Uh, let them submit all the feedback to the developers, let them fix the bugs, and then if it's something that I need and it's crucial to my business or whatever, I'll look and, and see if it fits my needs. All right. So I will see you in module five where we're going to be finalizing setting up the contest and we're going to be talking about how to make sure that the contest itself goes viral, which is very important to our process. I'll see you there.